Hey guys, I am here with Louie, the 17 year old Chinese crested, and we're going to give him a trim. He's not gonna go too awful short in the body. It's kind of a pony trim, but we keep a coating of hair on him so that he doesn't get chilled. It is winter time and he is a very aged senior. We do a clean face. We're keeping the hair on his ears and we're keeping his, his mane nice, but we're not letting it get too long because we don't want it to drop into his food when he drops his head down. So let's get busy. I am using a number five blade on his body. This will leave a nice little coating of hair. And yet still keep his style. If you would like to learn more about trimming Chinese crested dogs, whether it be a powder puff or a hairless or a hairy hairless, you can go to my YouTube channel playlist on Chinese crested trimming. I'm going to trim his face. I am using a 15 blade. Okay. I'll do around his little tongue after the bath and I'll show you close up how I get in there and you know reduce the risk greatly of nicking or cutting that tongue. Right now we're just getting a little bit of the bulk of this hair off. Next I'm going to use a 40 blade on the pads of the feet. Now we're gonna go give him a nice warm bath.
One of the things I like about using um, the shampoo full strength is rather than pouring room temperature water over the dog or shampoo in a more diluted form, I can actually put it in my hands, warm it up between my hands, and then put it on the dog. And it is so much more comfortable Every time I use diluted shampoo, now you can dilute it and use it immediately, nice and warm. And that's easy if you're doing one dog at a time, but it's time consuming if you're doing a lot of dogs. So, you know, I love the way I do it. I save shampoo. I can warm it up as I put it on the dog. It's much more comfortable. And when I use specialty products, it gives the dogs the full benefit of the product. Keep in mind though, you only want to use products that are labeled to use full strength or best used full strength. I am using a leave-on conditioner um, to save him from being in the tub too long. And this is really nice and soothing for his skin. It takes a very small amount. Put a little dime size amount in your hands, rub it between your hands really good, and then lightly pat it evenly all over the dog and then rub it in. Now I'm using Betoquinol Ear Cleansing Solution in the ears. Fill up each ear canal, not touching the tip of the bottle to the dog's ear. Rub the base of the ear and allow the dog to shake his head, if you will. It's kind of old, sometimes I'm steady. Older dogs don't do that so well. Or wrap them up in a nice warm towel. And disinfect the tub with barbicide. Give that 10 minutes to do its job and disinfect the tub. While we do that, we're gonna go blow dry the wood.
but to trim around his tongue, I'm using a 40 blade. And what I'm gonna do is just ease his tongue inside, brush this up with my finger, then using my 40 blade, I'm gonna carve out around the lips. Then I'll proceed to clean up the rest of the muzzle so it's all nice and even in appearance. I prefer to use a 40 blade on a A5 style clipper because you can see here the way that the teeth are different. There's less room in the teeth to catch skin, catch lips, catch the tongue, catch the little nodules on the lips, all that good stuff the safest blade for that type of work. And I'm often surprised that many grooming salon managers will not allow the use of a 40 blade in their salons as they feel that they are unsafe. But I say to that, it's not the blade that's unsafe. It's the blade in the wrong hands or being used for the wrong purpose that is unsafe. So now I'm using a four blade against the grain on the legs. That's gonna give me about the same length as five blade with the grain. The legs usually trim up smoother going against the grain. Isn't he the healthiest looking 17 year old dog? I mean, seriously, he looks so good. Now I'm using a five blade, going back over the trunk of the body. and cleaning up the legs where I need to.
Good job. Alrighty. Next, I'm going to trim around this feet. For these Chinese crested feet, I basically trim the front straight across and then lightly trim anything that looks out of line off the rest, rest of the foot. And the reason for that is if you scissor all the way around a crested foot, they lose the breed characteristic style of their foot. It doesn't look right. So once you have the front part of the foot done, you can comb it out and around and see if it looks okay. Usually it does. Usually it needs very, very little, if any at all, on the rest of the foot. Because you want it to flare out and you want it to look kind of natural around the foot. Now here, this right here we can thin out. A natural look, so I'm kind of good job. All righty. So now to keep this looking natural, yet to trim it up, basically when he drops his head, you don't want any of this to fall past his nose or fall into his dog food. So, because he hardly has any teeth, if at all. So the way I've been doing this, and it's working out really, really well for me, is I am holding all of this up between my fingers and then taking off the desired amount and I want it to look natural so I'm using blending shears that just kind of glide off the dog's hair and I'm using a sweeping motion to help give it that natural effect then drop it back down let it all fall into place and as you can see it comes out very natural it doesn't look chopped off, right? And that's what I want. Look at this nice feathering. It just looks so pretty. 
and then you can check again and see and look at it from the side now. These pieces are not dropping past his food or past his nose to get into his food. I can see a little bit more here I want to thin off because you do want to check it. So I'm going a little further back this time. And this works really good on Yorkies. I do it on my Yorkie. So I'm going further back. And careful you don't grab the scissors. That would be a huge mistake. Now, skimming this off. Drop it back down. See where it lands. Let's see how natural it looks. No straight lines, no chopping, breed characteristic, look. Now drop his head down and looky there. There's nothing falling into his food. That, my friends, is what we want. All right. And see, I, ha I don't have to go over it at all on this side. It still looks exactly like it should. Natural, flowing, pretty. And then right here on the back of his neck, their mane shouldn't start past the shoulder blade, so I brought that line up a bit. Now I'm just going to take these blending shears and blend this off. So when you choose blending shears for this purpose, you can see how this, the teeth curve upward off that blade. That's what you're looking for. If you want a blending shear that is going to go in and slide off, see that? Without holding on to the hair. Have you ever noticed when you go to do something like that with blending shears? It's like you do that, but you can't slide it off because the end kind of catches on the hair. You really need your thinning shears, blending shears to be designed to glide off the hair. And that's how you can tell. All right, almost done. I see a couple little sprigs of hair hanging over his eyes. I want it to look really natural, but I also want it trimmed. So again, I'm skimming. Skimming, 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 skimming. There, that's better. Natural, yet trimmed. So let's go make him a cute little bandana and he'll be ready to go home. So this is where I make the bows and bandanas. For him, we're making this cute little bone bandana that is outlined in red. I am outlining it with red satin ribbon. This looks to be about a half inch wide. Five eighths inch stretch elastic. I'm going to measure his to be 12 inches wide uh, for neck circumference. Now we have a really cute little collar that has a stretch elastic. Cute little bones all over it. Absolutely adorable. Louie is all finished and ready to go home, looking dapper as ever. All right, I'm gonna take him out to his pet parent and then we'll get this table and tools disinfected. First for the disinfecting, I'm going to dump this hair into the garbage can and then 
I will go disinfect it in the tub with the spray disinfectant. Next, using the Mycolia wipes, wipe down the table. Gather up all the tools used. With this dog flu going around, the kennel cough thing, you can't be too careful about your disinfection practices. Very, very, very important. So I am making sure all the hair is out of the brushes. out of the combs. Spray the brushes with alcohol. Put them in the UV sterilizer. Same with the combs. toenail clippers with clipper side then taking the blades and brush all the hair out of them Using my clipper size, mist over each blade and put it in the UV sterilizer. You want to make sure everything in the UV sterilizer is spread out evenly, not piled one on top of the other, because that would be absolutely ineffective because the UV light would not be able to reach the surface area of the tool. I'm going to put this on for 15 minutes, let it sit and do its thing and the tools will be ready for the next dog. All right, this is Sprinkles. She is another senior citizen. She is approximately 16 years old, uh, probably heading towards 17 and we're going to get her cleaned up too. It's senior citizens day around here. So let's get busy on sprinkles. Hey, sprinkles. You good girl. You little lady. 
For sprinkles, I'm using a four blade on the trunk of her body. Then we'll give her a nice warm bath and blow dry and scissor the legs, blend them into the body. Short rounded face, keep her ears a little bit short so they don't go into her food and that sort of thing. So both of these seniors look extremely good for their age, do they not? Very good pet parents keeping up with everything for these dogs, making sure that they are as healthy as possible. Of course, the care you give them really doesn't play as much a role in their longevity as genetics does. Um, also, the size of the dog makes a huge difference when it comes to how long they tend to live. Poodles are probably among the longest lived dogs that I know as a whole, as a breed. I've known very senior Bichons and very senior Shih Tzus as well. Dogs who are a little bit bigger have a shorter lifespan. The giant breeds have a very short lifespan, usually eight or nine years, which is a big drawback to having a giant breed like a Newfoundland or a Great Dane or an Irish Wolfhound. But people love, love, love those breeds, adore them, and wouldn't have anything else. So I totally get that too, right? Thank goodness for the people that love them and want to preserve them. That's a good girl. All right, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and get her into the tub, get her all washed up. So just like with the previous senior, I'm going to use a leave-on conditioner for this one. That'll lessen the amount of time she's wet in the tub, which is important to me. I don't want them to get chilled. Okay. 
just around her eyes is quite hard. I might have to keep her in the tub longer than expected anyway. This can be prevented by washing the eyes daily, using a sterile eye wash on the eyes um, prior to washing under the eyes, and then using a microfiber or just a soft washcloth, dipping it in warm water. I like to use like a cup of warm water with a drop or two of Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo. Dip your cloth into that and really saturate the face. And if it's a little stuck on, wait a minute or two, do it again. Wait a minute or two, do it again, even a third time if necessary. And then using a little plastic comb, like a men's hair comb, and gently comb it out and then wash it one more time. That usually will do it. If you do it every day, you don't have to do the second and third time. You just have to do the first time. It takes much less time because nothing's had a chance to harden on. I am going to condition her since I have to wait on those eyes to soften. There's no way around getting her out of the tub quicker. So we're going to wash her face a second time. Giving this stuff a chance to loosen and soften. don't want to pick at it too much. You don't know if it's raw underneath the crust from anaerobic bacteria. You don't know if the skin is overly softened under there from having the crust on top and a little bit of picking will actually gouge it. It's better just to let it soften. Rinse her again.
Next, using Better Quinol Ear Cleansing Solution, I'm going to put a couple drops into each ear, filling up the ear canal. Grab the base of the ear and encourage her to shake her head if she will. Again, most senior dogs won't because they lose their balance easily. So they usually don't go into the excessive head shaking. If they do, they start it off very, very slow. Wrap her up in a nice warm towel. Spray the tub with barbicide disinfectant. Everywhere where the dog touches. At the end of the day, I do a deeper cleaning on the tub. And now we're going to take her off and get her dry.
And it's a good balance to your nails. Good girl sprinkles.
And then I'm going to trim around her eyes with the tin blade. And the front of her muzzle a little bit. Next, I'm going to do a Tony. And under her tail. Okay, get a clean blade. Now I'm going to use a 30 blade on the pads of the feet. Now I'm going to clean off the table and brush all her hair up and brush any of the clippings caught around her feet off. Removing them from the table as I do so they don't step in them and get them caught up again. And it's a good baby. going to round the feet Basically, my goal with the seniors is to not have them on the table too long. Just get what we need to get done, done, and then get them right back home again.
open this one. Oh no, you're fine. Da, 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 da. So many times seniors are very sensitive around their muzzles. They get to a point where they can't have dentals done anymore and sometimes they have dental pain. Sometimes it's blindness and deafness. Sometimes it's all of the above. And dogs who are seniors also feel threatened more so than the average dog by certain holds or touches because they know that their response time is a little slower, just like senior people, or they can't see or hear as good and they're not sure about what's coming at them. So that's really understandable, right? I give my seniors freedom to stand or lay down as they choose as much as possible. They don't have to stand up. And I get whatever I need to get done, you know, from a standing position done while they are standing. That way, if they do decide to lay down, I can switch to something that I can do from this position. It's very strategic. And then use some chunkers and round up her ears a little bit. When I do that, I like to mist them with the conditioning spray. It's okay, you can stay laying down. I just need to see your ear. All right, Miss Sprinkles is looking good. I'm gonna go make her a pretty bow. And get her 
ready to go home. Let's make sprinkles a cute bow. We're gonna use black and white polka dot and red and white polka dot. This is gonna be cute. So for the black and white polka dot, I'm going to burn the edges, fold it over one time, and burn the edge again. Set this one aside, do the next one. Try to get them about the same size. Let's measure them, see if they look about the same size. If not, you can adjust it so that they do, that's pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do with these two pieces, I'm gonna pinch this one in and pinch it out, then pinch this one in and pinch it out. Then we're gonna stack them. And true to its name, this is a stacked bow. It's a very pretty bow. I love these. Now we're going to take this smaller red and white ribbon. This is about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. This one's about an inch and a half. I'm gonna do the same with this one. Same pattern. They're pretty even in size. Come lined up nicely. And we're going to pinch in, pinch out, and pinch in, pinch out. It's a little harder with these skinny ones. And stack it. <laughs> Fingers don't want to work. Now, take the band off the back of this one. And slide it over the top of this one. Oh yeah, that's cute, look at that. Now, I'm going to put a centerpiece with a pearl and some rhinestones. Press that right in the center and hold it in until it's nice and dry. Only takes a second. Then, she's got about no more than an 11 inch neck. Cut the stretch elastic and slide the stretch elastic through the band on the back. And then we'll put a 
dotted glue here, glue it to the back of the bow. <clears throat> Dot of glue on the opposite side and then we're gonna also lift these up and glue underneath so that they stay right where they're supposed to stay if you get any glue on your bows you can just burn it and it disappears and then put some glue here, turn it into a very cute little collar, and there we go. Isn't that adorable? Well, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads. As we head out, we're going to play some members' picks and videos. Please enjoy. We'll see you next time. Bye. Good girl. Abs, Abs, what are you doing?